Hey everyone, I'm Almar of AlmarsGuides.com and in this video here I'm going to show you how to open the music box on the bottom floor of um, the shipwreck dungeon and how to get to the final boss of that dungeon, which is essentially the same thing. So in order to do this, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to uh, complete the Divining House and the Cathedral. Both of these buildings are of crucial importance in order to do this because we need to witness the event at both of them. So the first thing you're going to want to do is the fortune teller. There's going to be a, uh, an interesting event in the fortune teller's house where she essentially rides your head and tells your fortune. So you'll be able to see that here. Can you tell my fortune? The only one you have to ask about is the first option, where is the moon orb? You don't have to ask about the sec second option, the dark genie. Although, it's up to you if you would like to. We're just going to do the moon orb for the purposes of this video, because that's all we need. So here is the first scene where she's showing you uh, what happened to the moon orb. Now, that gives you an indication of who we have to talk to next. So I'll actually list the steps now to give me something to talk about as I'm tabbing through all of this dialogue. Uh, the first step is talk to Yawa, the fortune teller, or sorry, Yaya, the fortune teller, whom we just talked to. The next one is visit Lana's store, the fruit vendor here. After that, we need to talk to Phil, who owns the cathedral. And then uh, after we talk to Phil, we need to return to the fortune teller and talk to her again. And then during that, once you talk to the fortune teller that last time, there's going to be a uh, cutscene where you see a key in Rando's shop down by the dock. And uh, that will be where you get the music box key. So now you don't have to technically watch the whole video, but I will show you how to do it in the video nonetheless. So there's the, the special scene we just got for 100% uh, completing Cathedral. And this also pairs with it, I think. He pretty much gives you the entire backstory of uh, the rando guy, the merchant that we first met when we came here, as well as the queen who's going to be the final boss of this uh, dungeon. Also, there's one more very important item you want to grab while you're in this building. Right up here is a chest, and it's going to have a pocket in it. And that pocket gives you plus 10 uh, carry capacity. Like I said, very, very important. Also, one thing I can give you some tips. Explore the um, outskirts of town for the defense boosting items and all other valuable boosting items. Specifically, um, the like the places you didn't personally build, like around the ins and outs where you exit, where you enter and exit of town. Oops, I asked the same question twice because I was too busy, preoccupied. But the Entrances and exits of town typically have items like fish candy, fluffy donut, gourd, and uh, witch parfait, grass cake. The witch parfait is rubies, the grass cake is uh, goros, and uh, the um, fluffy donut is tones, and the fish candy is uh, xiaos. All of them are very, very important items because they give you defense boosts, which is uh, makes your characters take less damage. Very, very important. Now let's uh, choose the right one this time. Where's the man whom the queen loved? You'll see that we have a third option instead of the first two. And this is the one that you're supposed to uh, choose at her the second time around. Also, uh, don't forget to search the docks. It's where Rando's shop is, where the area it's showing you right now. If you run down the docks and search by the boats, you'll find a gourd as well as a fluffy donut down in that direction. Also, after we watch this scene at Rando's shop, if I am not mistaken, other items spawn there. A good rule of thumb in Dark Cloud is to explore all of the areas where uh, you didn't... Hmm, how do I put it? Explore all of the areas you didn't build, the entrances and exits out of town, and the outskirts of town. Those are generally the best, like the best way that I can think of explaining it. Also, one thing to note is you can also see the chest in the Georama overview. So you can uh, kind of get a bird's eye view of the entire area. If your eyesight is good, you'll be able to spot them. So you can see the glittering key on the uh, counter. This is how we get the music box key. 
And, of course, we're going to get a little bit more backstory. But in the interest of saving you time, we're not going to wa watch any of it. Let's uh, see if I was right about a chest spawning in here. If I'm not mistaken, it did last time. But I uh, might have just been a chest that I missed. Yeah, it looks like a chest that I missed the last time. R2 is very helpful when you're looking for chests in areas like that because Dark Cloud has a fixed camera view. So now that we have the music box key, let me, uh... We're going to go into Queens because I'm going to actually eliminate the boss probably in this video. Ruby doesn't have a good weapon for me, but Tone has a good weapon, so I can basically take her out with just that. Uh, there's a few items you want to bring for... Well, technically, now that we have the key, that is uh, all you need to see. The key, you know, goes into the... Goes into the chest, as you would expect. You should have no more complications at this time. However, if uh, you would like to see the boss fight be done very easily, maybe stick around. I might end the video before I get there. Nope. There we go. I found those, which is... We'll buy a few of those, even though I probably don't need them. And that should be all I need in order to take out the boss. The stamina drinks. The reason that I bought the stamina drinks for the boss is because... As long as you have a buff or a debuff on you, you can't have another one applied to you. So, if you drink a stamina drink, you're not only going to do more damage and take less damage, you're also going to um, be unable to be affected by the freeze debuff that this boss has that is very, very annoying. So, we can cheese the entire difficult aspect of the fight with a single, well, more than a single stamina drink, but essentially a single stamina drink. got a curse plot on us which is not that big of a deal i don't need to switch tones weapon anyway so these are the most annoying enemies by far Another thing that's helpful for the boss, if you got it, is throbbing cherries. They will also remove the freeze. However, that's going to still result in you getting hit with the freeze, which is, you know, not that useful. I am going to uh, see what this of the equipped weapon became full. That's fine. That's a good one. Good weapon to have it to as well. For it to happen to. But as you see in there, I created a save state before I checked it because if it wasn't what I wanted, then I would just restart. No point in clearing that room because I just need the music chest. Seems like we, uh... turn the wrong way at the entrance the music chest that would it's probably going to be like right by the entrance just down the hall in the other way it likes to do that sometimes gosh darn it i hate these chariots of course it's like always the last place you look right anyway here you go music box key into the music box just like so and then the boss is going to come out. 
and then we're going to fight Miss, Miss Bossy. If you would like a written strategy for this boss, check my website, almarsguides.com. We're going to breeze through this boss quite quickly, though. I will give you a quick little rundown. Uh, you have to hit her with a melee attack for her to drop her uh, ranged shield that she has. Which you'll see at the start of the fight. So, And also, you want to switch your all of your weapons to fire elements. I switch back and forth between Tone and Ruby for this fight. Uh, fire will, is her weakness, obviously, considering she is the Ice Queen. And that will allow you to deal more damage to the boss. So it's highly recommended. And you're going to be what you're going to do for this fight, it's kind of like the first time we fought Duran. You're going to be switching back and forth between Tone and... Uh, Ruby. Instead, on when we fought Dran, it was uh, Tone and uh, Xiao. And you'll see that my uh, Tone's weapon is quite good. Hello. Well. I switched. Switched to. Uh, that was 100% my fault. Because I switched to uh, Ruby from Tone while that was flying at me. Because I was trying to do this. Actually. Did I just hit her for 875? Or... Let's see how much I hit her for. Yeah, holy cow, 875. That's with the stamina potion and my uh, decent weapon. Apparently, though, she has more health than as, as usual. Or maybe that is, uh... I wonder if her shield has a different health value than her. And that's what I'm getting. See how when, uh... After you hit her once, or after you hit her with uh, the melee attack like this, you can't hit her again with a melee attack. It gets no effect. And it's the same deal for Ruby. If you try to hit her when she has the shield up, you'll get no effect. So that's why you have to switch back and forth between a melee attacker and uh, a ranged attacker. You need to eliminate the shield, and then you need to switch to a character that can actually damage her who most likely is a green attacker. See, I, I was immune to the uh, freeze there, despite the fact that a crystal did fall. There you go. And that's all there is to it. That's how you open the music box and also how you defeat the final boss of this dungeon. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. I know it went on a little long. Uh, aside from that, I guess I will see you guys around in future Dark Cloud videos. Peace.